what we need to do is we need to open up our market to competition. And we need to open up our market to competition in this way. We need to open up our cars to competition. And we need to tell the auto industry, look, we don't care how you do it. We don't care which technology you use. You want to electrify vehicles? Fine. You want to do CNG? Fine. You want to do liquid fuel choice? Fine. If you do a liquid fuel choice, not enough to do gasoline ethanol. We want gasoline ethanol methanol because we want the broadest range of choice here. Full competition. So fuels made from agricultural material, from natural gas, from coal, perhaps in the future from recycled carbon dioxide can all compete. We don't care which technology you use, but you need to open your cars to fuel competition. Because if you don't, what you are implicitly doing, and we know you're not doing it on purpose, and we know it's not any bizarre conspiracy, we know it's just inertia, but what you're implicitly doing is colluding with a cartel. And since this is not a normal cartel comprised of companies and we don't have the policy option of bringing an antitrust lawsuit against them, and since, look, it's almost now 11 years after 9-11. I don't think I need to tell anybody I don't need to get into the details of the link between oil and the national security vulnerabilities that we face. If it's not clear at this point, there's nothing I can say that will make it clear to people. But we need to tell the auto industry, everybody gets this link. A. The fact that the oil market is dominated by a cartel has profound economic implications for this country. Because every time oil price spikes, we don't know why, economists don't understand exactly why, but what is known is every time oil price spikes, economy goes into a downturn. And a second spike now, in the current fragile state of our economy is like a second heart attack to somebody that's just recovering from one. It's a terrible thing. So we need to tell the auto industry, Congress needs to tell the auto industry, open your cars to fuel competition. We need an open fuel standard that says new cars need to allow fuel competition. Do it any way you want, but you need to do it. When you buy a car today, it's on the road in the U.S. for over 16 years. That's how long it takes to turn over the fleet. That means that every day, every week, every year that we wait is another day, week, year, 16 years down the road that we're going to be stuck with cars that are wedded to a commodity that is monopolized by a cartel comprised of countries that do not wish us well. There's a lot more that we can talk about, but I'm going to end on this point so we can have a vigorous discussion and questions, assuming you have questions. What I want to leave you with is that we are talking about something very simple here. If you think about liquid fuel choice, under $100 a car. It took Brazil three years to go from zero to 70% of its new cars being flex fuel. We're not talking about a technology that needs to be invented. We're talking about the folks in Washington needing to get their heads together 
and decide to do something that doesn't benefit any one industry over the other and doesn't subsidize anybody but creates an open and competitive market for transportation fuel so that we can turn oil into salt. Thank you, and I'm glad to take questions. A car that enables fuel competition doesn't tell you which fuel to use. That's if we look at liquid fuel choice. If we look at electrified vehicles, you're not making a performance uh, compromise at all. I had the very great pleasure of driving a Tesla. I, I like to drive. And I have to tell you, that was the most fun car I have ever driven. And the reason is, and one of the things that, I don't often do this, but I'm going to do this now. One of the things that most annoyed me during the, this campaign so far, there was one particular candidate who I know knows very, very well the importance of a fuel choice. I know he knows it very well. He understands everything that we talked about. And yet, he dared utter the sentence, you can't put a gun rack on a vault. Okay? And to me, that was incredibly infuriating. Because the purpose of a sentence like that, a Volt, of course, is the plug-in hybrid from GM. The purpose of a sentence like that, uh, there's a reason I'm telling you all this. It's, it's, it's important to understand because we can't let this happen to us. The, the purpose of a sentence like that is to say some technologies, you know, are manly men technologies and some technologies are sissy technologies. And Electrified vehicles, these are sissy cars. Now, I am all for arguing about particular policies, but when it comes to demonizing and sexualizing a particular technology in order to, to make it a culture war issue, I think this is utterly irresponsible. You can have an F-150 that's a plug-in hybrid. There's more room for the battery. They're not making it, but there's no reason that they can't. The bigger the vehicle is, the more room there is for batteries. And you can put a gun rack on it. <laughs> if you look at what the military's doing, they're putting gun racks on its prototype stage, but gun racks on electrified tactical vehicles. They're not gun racks, they're machine gun racks. You know, so, so my point is there's no compromise with this technology. The issue with electrification, with electrified vehicles, is that they're more expensive now. Presidential candidates should all hope that the cost comes down. But we can't allow them to do certain things, okay? Here's what we cannot, the list of what you should not tolerate from your representatives, from your senators, from people running for president. Do not tolerate it if they say we're very dependent on oil, it's a serious problem, let's build, you know, on one side solar and panels and wind turbines, on the other side nuclear power plants. Irrelevant. They know it's not true, they know one thing has nothing to do with the other, so if they're telling you that, call them on it. Second thing, it's fine to say let's drill more. It's fine to say let's increase efficiency. It's not fine to say these things in and of itself, in and of themselves are going to solve our problem. Now, this is something where you need to do education rather than confrontation because I think this is an imp something that's, it's not obvious, okay? It's not obvious. But the education is the problem is that oil is a strategic commodity because it has a monopoly over transportation fuel that monopoly is married to a cartel. We don't have the ability to bring 
antitrust action against the regimes that comprise this cartel, so we need to do something, and that something is the open our cars to fuel competition. That's the education point. But the third thing is, if they try to demonize a particular technology, not a policy, it's okay, for example, to say, it's very legitimate to say, I think technologies need to be able to stand on their own in the market. That's a very different thing than saying, this is a good technology because, you know, culture war reasons and this one is beyond the pale. Very different, don't let them go there. 